Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the place where we not only talk about what's going on in the gun world, but also how we're going to fix it together. And the content that I've got for you to start off 2024 is going to make you smile. We have moved from the issue of registration with the assault weapons ban to a nightmare scenario for the gun controllers in Illinois and national. This has moved from a standpoint of annoyance into a very serious credibility problem of which we talked about on this channel and we're about to break down even further. You're going to want to see every second of this. Of course, everything will be linked in the description box below. Make sure you send this one out and share this one because this is bigger than Illinois. And of course, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on. All right, my brothers and sisters. This is one of my favorite things that I do. And let me know if you guys like this about this channel as well. I really like to zoom out and look at the as this continues, the next steps. There's an entire trend to observe. It's not just about what the actual occurrence is. It's what's the what are the implications and where does this take us from there? I love that. Do I love doing that in that analysis. This is a really good example. When we were talking about the Illinois assault weapons ban problem that the Democrats had, you had to look at, are people going to comply? Well, people didn't comply. As of right now, it's roughly around 2%. Last week, it was 0.34%. You've got a big compliance problem. But now the ball's in their court. They flex their muscles. No one listened to the, uh, to the bluff. And now they have to respond. And they have two options. They can either ignore it and have egg on their face, or they can clamp down and they have bigger problems. What I'm about to show you is the left's response and the desire to clamp down on. They want to go after the sheriffs. Again, the ball is in their court. And you talk about a political nightmare in an election year? Walk through this road. That's why this is a nightmare, like I mentioned. All right, let's get into this. Everything is always linked. Let's get it. Illinois has banned assault weapon ownership, but local sheriffs say they won't enforce it. What now? No one knows is the answer. And this is coming from a, a publication on the left in Illinois. Listen to what they're saying. Again, here's the numbers, about 52,000 people, which is about 2% of the population who have FOID cards. So mass noncompliance. It's official. The deadline is passed. But now look where they go after this. You have a problem. You either risk your credibility completely from Illinois or you over enforce and you give the opposition politically fodder to take you out. That's, that's exactly what will happen. Okay. That's why we said this was a big bluff. There was a lot riding on this non-compliance and it's coming to pass. Check this out. This mass non-compliance presents a major political challenge for Illinois ruling Democrats. It doesn't mean much that the party spent 2023 fighting for the PICA, that's the assault weapons ban in courts, if those charged with enforcing the law decide they don't care what the courts say. It, it's also indicative of the cultural and political divides with, between liberal, urban, Chicago land in northeastern Illinois and the wider, more conservative, more rural areas to the state's south and west, almost like you don't have complete support you only have it in your little bastion of Chicago. Everywhere else gives you one of these, right? That's why we made the shirt that is our most popular shirt. Uh, Restrain the rights of the legal enhances the power of the criminal. You guys bought it like crazy because you clearly believe that. It's obvious. It's showing. It's right down there if you want to get one, by the way, in the description box. But that's the point. They are trying to restrain the rights of the legal and they are enhancing the power of the criminal. That's why you see what you see nationally. Let's continue, though, because, again, this is about the bulk, the bluff. They just... They're getting called, and they have very, very bad options. We're getting to those in a second. More practically speaking, Illinois State University Legal Studies Professor Jason Sisolik and the downstate sheriffs refuse, refusals to enforce PICA represent a major affront to the state government's legitimacy. That's the point. They went too far, and they have a legitimacy problem now. Police, not politicians, are ultimately the ones walking around with guns. And if law enforcement gets away with disobeying the state here, what's to stop them from blowing off any other laws they oppose? Where does this begin and where does this end? I don't know. You understand what that's saying? This is the sheriff's. This is a constitutionally elected position. This is the last safeguard against an overbearing legislature in, in this case, in Chicago. This is, this is or Springfield, rather. This is the entire point. When you look at what we're dealing with here, this is so much more about the registration, which is why they didn't care about the registration as much. They cared about the issue if the registration fails. It has failed. You're at 52,000 people, and you have a, legitim a legitimacy problem now. So the only problem, the only thing that you can do, like I was mentioning, is you either ignore it with egg on your face, which destroys your political future and your government's legitimacy, or you crack down on those who would oppose you. You're going, you're going to go after the sheriffs? All right, let's keep going. Let me show you this. 
Sizzlek worried about the repeat of this incident with state government left holding the bag for sheriff's refusal to rein in unlicensed guns. He urged the state government to get serious about the issue, perhaps even to levy criminal penalties against sheriffs who refuse to enforce the new law. You need some prosecutorial, prosecutorial authority to step in and say enough is enough. Now, these are the exact same people who are operating under a sanctuary state for immigration. They don't mind when they do it for their causes, but the second that you go against one of their sacred cows, oh, we need some prosecutorial, prosecutorial authority. They're trying to go after the sheriff. They are floating the trial balloon of arresting the sheriffs. Um, that's a constitutionally elected position which is meant to curtail your power, and you want to knock it down? Good luck. In fact, if you continue here, and this is the big thing, look at this from Pritzker's problem or Pritzker's perspective. All these peas are killing me right now. I see the problem from Pritzker's position. Considering the issue as a 2024 election cycle looms, the party's not going to go that way. It wouldn't do him any good to create a culture of a culture. Oh my gosh, words! It wouldn't do him any good to create a culture of victimization of sheriffs because that's what the NRA would come out with. They don't want to give that narrative to Fox News. But bad political narratives are not. Sisalik warned that unless the state didn't act on the sheriff's noncompliance, the line between police and judge enforcing the law and interpreting it may begin to fade. If somebody doesn't grow some teeth, we're going to see some blurring of the line, he said. And that's the entire point right there. If you understand this from the gun control perspective, you flex so incredibly hard on banning all of these things. People didn't listen. 52,000 people, around 2%-ish, said, eh, fine, I'll do it. Well, that means 98% didn't. You have a legitimacy problem. So now you either have egg on your face, like I mentioned, and you just have a big L walking around that everyone ignored you, or you go after the sheriffs in an election year, in which case you'll only further bolster the Republican position that you're a gun-controlling tyrant, which you are, by the way. Understand that this assault weapons ban registration was the ultimate gambit for the gun controllers, and it has failed. You are about to see something incredible, and that's what I've got for you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm Braden. See you later.